Collaboration isn't an application of leadership because in the modern world we are going to need to take people with us to do anything, to achieve anything, and to achieve anything great. Um, I think collaboration is a central heart of what we need to do globally, actually, as well as locally. And I think it's not so new, this concept. It's just that we've hidden behind individual leaders before. And if you look at individual leaders who have been successful, they've had to actually pull people together and collaborate very well. And where they have failed is when they failed to do that. And I think collaboration should be more talked about. But in, in the English language, collaboration always sounds like capitulation. So it's, it's the lowest common denominator, whereas I think um, it's a little bit like the word compromise. West Africans use it to mean we will compromise. We will compromise. We'll come to an agreement. Whereas in, in the West, we use it as surrender. You know, oh, do you, why did you have to compromise? Great chairs always say, look, there'll be a time when I'm going to cut you short and I'm going to be rude about it. So you, before we start, you have to accept I'm going to do that and I apologize now for it, which means they don't get into the debate at the moment they do it. And I think that's quite necessary. I think that's something we're getting less good at, the, the, the public good as opposed to my good and your good. We're getting quite into, um, for my community or for my individual needs, this is what the public good is, as opposed to actually the public good is this, and I will back that. I think people are sometimes frightened of collaboration, actually. I think they're frightened um, because they, they don't know where their place is in it in, in any longer, and they don't really know who's in charge. And I do think it's actually all about power. Um, and they're much more comfortable, oddly enough, competing with each other because they know the rules of the game. So you've actually, you have actually got to shift people's mindset quite a bit if you actually want them to collaborate. And I think you do that by example. Certainly in some of the, the circles that I work, if you refuse to compete, if you refuse to use your status, that message begins to rub off and people work in, in, quite, different, in quite, different, a quite a different manner. And, and somebody asked me, what's your style of leadership? You know, a whole bit of me thinks, I'm, I'm at the front there, mate. I'm strident. I make the decisions and I know where I'm going. What a load of rubbish, actually. <laughs> you know, none of us does. You know, um, old Galileo and standing on the shoulders of giants was absolutely right. And actually what we do is, is have a room of giants that we, that we bring together. So is collaboration about giving up or is it adding? Is it additive? And it has to be additive. Pure collaboration finds a leader, but you do have to have a leader. You have to have someone that keeps the conversation on track, keeps the activity on track. And some collaborations have, have a danger, as committees do, of talking too much and producing pieces of paper to justify their existence rather than actually getting things done. And it's the getting things done which at the end of the day is what keeps these things um, together. So if you, if you do spend too much time in the bureaucracy or organization uh, and not enough time actually creating value, then you probably should give up. In the organization I used to, uh, used to work in, um, we actually had a lot of very competitive, aggressive, alpha-type uh, personalities. But we actually also had very high levels of collaboration. And we did that through really two things. One, making it very clear up front in the recruitment process to individuals that if they did not, if they were not willing to collaborate, frankly, they were in the wrong place. But secondly, more importantly, once they got inside, we came down very hard, very fast on individuals who were not demonstrating the right sort of teamwork, collaborative uh, behavior. And we reinforced that time and time again through all the sorts of communication, through how people were recognized, through uh, promotion criteria. Um, everything in the organization just sort of reinforced that value set that said, above all, we will collaborate because if we don't collaborate, we're not going to succeed. I think you absolutely have to, have to start with agreeing what the objective is. And that's where there's actually no real room for compromise. And I suspect that in many situations, we fudge that particular step, and it's sort of close enough. You know, there's 50% overlap between what you want to do and what I want to do, so, so, so that's, that's okay. I actually would spend more time up front bringing those two circles together so that as far as possible there's 100% overlap in terms of what we, uh, we agree in terms of the, the final outcome. We know, don't we, that uh, actually in moving forward you sometimes have to go through uh, meetings, series of things where you actually don't seem to be making progress. 
but hopefully underneath you are because you're gathering a consensus, not a, not a word that everybody likes, but I do, gathering a consensus of view before moving forward again. If you've got people in the group who don't want to collaborate um, and you know, probably from previous experience, that this isn't a one-off, that's uh, a real challenge for any leader. And um, I would say some of the even strong leaders try and avoid that rather than to confront it. And that's for good reason, because it is time-consuming and it is draining on the soul. On the other hand, a point may well come, or you may well decide yourself, that you have to tackle that particular person. We're talking about a person, or it may be more than one, and to find out really what's going on. And then I think there's a mixture of, of carrot and stick. For any leader, um, the collaboration that you have is always quite fragile. For me, it's, it's almost trial and error. It's gauging the atmosphere in the room, summarising it, and if what you pick up around the room that it's too soon, saying, hang on a minute, maybe, let's just go around that one more time and see if we've got it right. But the difficult case is where people become quite isolated in their view and have difficulty compromising without losing their face or credibility. Uh, and sometimes in those cases, I suspect you just have to stop and start again on another occasion, having spent a bit of time in the interim talking to people. Often, when leaders know when they've reached the point of um, sufficient uh, collaboration and sufficient solution to go forward, but, but the round won't allow them to actually call, draw that line. So it's quite important that there's an understanding that the leader is going to draw that line. And then the challenge for the leader becomes actually recognise sufficient, because it will never be perfect. And, and being able to, and it needs a kind of leader who can recognise that actually this is going to do the job.